When you learn karate, especially if you come to learn karate with us, we will teach you to be better equipped than you ever were. I reckon that perhaps we could have stopped practicing martial arts many years ago if we weren't from the karate.
but no matter how good my timing is, I'll never beat Mike in remote tennis. Because I hardly practice the technical skills that I require for tennis. So I've got no chance. Even if I wait as long as the credit. Now, if you want if you want to have a fight while we're using the tennis bats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's alright. I understand that kind of timing. <laughs>
appeals to the you. But the instant you free up so that you can do anything, your body condition, your movement, your skills have to change. My mind has to change. It's how you position. This half step here is how you position yourself. Now often we discuss positioning yourself for someone here. And that's fair enough, that's an extreme case. So usually the guy who's kind of hitting is coming from me. But the condition is the same. I've got to use this half step to, to position myself to be where I want to be. Right? So, make sure you position yourself.
This section of the DVD is dedicated to the fifth dance and measures of Shoto Budo. But before we do see these small clips, I would just like to say a few words myself about the organisation and about Bali. Well personally, it has given me a complete new outlook in life, from when I started Shoto Budo and done other martial arts to where I am now. I think with Bali's guidance and vast support that it gives us has made me a better person today. I now have a clearer view on life in general, not to mention the cognitive and spatial aspects. So to be part of a tremendous and growing organisation is a privilege and I hope it continues for many, many years. When Shota Buddha was formed, I was already running my own clubs and I um, spent some time practising both with the previous um, people from the previous organisation and um, with Billy as well. And within a, a, a very short space of time, I remember having a disillusionment with, with martial arts at the time because I felt that there was no... It, it, there were no real connections between what we were doing in any kind of sense of realism and in uh, my my first um connection with billy was when i began to see that he made some very very important connections between the martial arts and and the real world for me his friendship has gone way beyond martial arts um his knowledge of martial arts and and of many subjects and his approach to many subjects is really enlightening. And um, whether it be troubled times or fun times, I, I have to say I thoroughly enjoy sharing them with him and I'm, I'm thankful for him. <clears throat> and we've been asked to recall some stories about Billy over a year. Well, concerning karate. Obviously, the, the stories is, is, are actually when we are, we're practicing karate at different venues over the place. We were actually over at Finland once for me, Billy, uh, Hugh Russell, I'm trying to recall the names that were there, Les Lacey, uh, his girlfriend. Uh, anyway, we got to Finland and started to practice and that. We had a practice on the Friday. We took us for the Finnish people, took us for a meal, which was kind of easy. Uh, I think we stayed in the hotel that night, and on the Saturday they took us out to a villa to stay. Uh, the villa was, it was very nice, quite a, a nice villa. We had a, a room to myself, I think, if I can recall. And uh, the end of the night we'd actually had a few drinks, we were a wee bit tipsy by that time. And, uh, proceeded up the stairs to bed. Billy and them hadn't come up yet, I was, I was probably feeling a wee bit worse for a beer now. And when I went up the stairs and into the room, it's in the bed there, nice bed, but I said, oh, nice, 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 cosy sleep the night. I had a look in the, the parlour, seen a set of pyjamas, these guys are really good to even giving you pyjamas now. <laughs> I slipped the pyjamas on, slipped into bed, decided that oh, I better go down the stairs, the toilet was down the stairs, better go down and have a slash first, <laughs> just before I fall asleep. I was walking down the stairs and Billy shouted, How are you, young? You, yeah, well, so the you call it, and you can actually blow up that one. What are you, young? What are you doing? And I said, like, well, What have I done here? And he says, You got in my pyjamas on. <laughs> <laughs> but Billy and his, his kindness and generosity actually let me keep his pyjamas for the duration of the, the finish, was it? <laughs> so you must admit, he's a generous man, as well as a good teacher, can I? Another great story I remember about Billy actually was. He used to, Billy used to come down when we were practicing at Ascot, and uh, this was this was out with your your sort of weekend courses and this. But Billy would come down periodically just for a weekend for for training, you know, and obviously to, to sort of visit Vinnie and, and sort of see Colin and everything that everything had to do. So periodically he would come along, but there was a a, a time uh, in in Billy's practice, if you like, where I don't know whether he had an injury or something. But he was obviously he couldn't really train a lot, so he put on a lot of weight, and his fitness level had gone down. And he came down to this practice, and it was probably just prior to something like spring school or summer school. So Colin had been absolutely working the bollocks off of us. He'd really been running us into the ground. So we were all super fit, and you know how it was. He'd be gearing you up for the course. 
So he, uh, so he was doing all this stuff, and 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 Billy came along, and uh, he obviously came in and he came in to do the practice, and it was Kibadash attacking continual. So so Billy had to Billy Billy was standing in, in Kibadash, and people were throwing themselves at him, and they were punching and they were grabbing, and Billy and Colin he was he was just sort of dispatching them in the way he would, he would do, you know, which he was particularly good at. And, but this went on and on, and it's, it's, it's a great testament to the man that he, uh, whether, whether it's something that had caught and done, but he, he wasn't allowed to get up, you know, I mean, after, after five minutes, <clears throat> we were still doing it, and Billy was still in Kibadash, still hanging on there, and now you begin to, sorry, you begin to see the strain was sort of coming through and he hears us lining up and we're attacking him and he, he was sort of dispatching us 10 minutes has gone by and he's still in Kibidach you know really really now in pain in serious pain because he's, he's been injured he's not trained he's, he's, he's put on a bit of beef 15 minutes has gone by he's oh. still in Kibidach we're attacking him and it, and he, uh, it was the or it was really that almost out of body experience for him, you know, he just had to hang on to something that was not physical. <laughs> and you know, sort of 15 minutes, 20 minutes went by and he just never ever let up for a minute. It, was a, it, it shows you, it was the inner steel of the person. And what it, what it came down to, I remember talking to him about it later, was he wasn't going to let that situation he, uh, just beat him, and because we were all down there and we're all super fit, and he felt he, you know, he wasn't sure whether the situation had been created, but he was definitely not giving into it. <coughs> Probably and was created. And a, uh, oh, a good, good twenty minutes of just standing in Kibidach, <laughs> and so we were just hammering and hammering and hammering. Twenty minutes later, and he, he, he never ever gave up. Did so you go fatty? <laughs> Well, he started off that by the end of that practice, <laughs> he was like a rake. <laughs> I remember being on a flight to Finland with Billy and we were, we were chatting about the development of a master text and he was talking to me about um, where his head was at in terms of um, how to produce such a book. And I, I actually had a splitting headache by the end of the conversation and it wasn't because of turbulence or anything like that in the aeroplane, it was simply because um, the way that he was structuring his thoughts and, and communicating with me was was so multi-layered and multifaceted. and at the end of the conversation I realised that really the stuff that we'd been talking about was only kind of touching the surface of where he was at. I phoned and asked if he would come through to Cumbernauld and take practice and I could train with him. So he says, on one condition, he says, you come, you pick me up, you do all the traveling, I'll take the practice. And for six months, every Monday, I would drive through to Rosyth, pick Billy up, drive back to Cumbernauld, we would practice for two hours, then I'd drive him back to his hotel, we would sit in the bar, for another two hours. And um, there was one there was one time in particular he decided he wanted to demonstrate the power of the punch. He said, right, when I punch you, I want I want you to feel the energy going down to the left, I feel the energy going down to the right, feel the energy going down, and each time he hit me you could feel the energy of his punch going to the areas he, he predicted and then he just whacked right through. He says, now this might hurt, and Jesus, it was the hardest punch I've ever been hit. I couldn't move. But I didn't fall, I stood still, and I inside I felt my internal organs giving it a bit of parring of the pain. <laughs> <coughs> Shit, that was sore. And um, later on that night, driving back in the car, he says, that was really good tonight. I says, what was that? He says, how you took that punch tonight? He says, I knew you couldn't move for three minutes. No one else knew. I started to get to know Billy slightly better when we began to do NLP training together and went down to a number of courses down in Higham. Um, 
At lunchtime, Billy started to use the NLP and DBM techniques that we've been taught to start to teach the course participants martial arts. And most of these people had really no martial arts experience at all. Some of them um, didn't really do a lot of physical exercise. One of the uh, participants was coming up for her 50th birthday and she wanted to learn how to do a fall draw. Now she had really no gymnastic experience, she had no martial arts experience and really um, she didn't do a lot of physical exercise. Things were complicated slightly by the fact that she had an inner ear problem and her balance wasn't particularly good. Billy however said, yeah, we can have a go at that and uh, started off teaching her to do forward rolls just in the, the rooms using uh, basically mattresses um, as crash mats to let her break fall. She started kneeling down and gradually was able to do a forward roll. The lady was quite happy with that, but Billy wasn't. He started to have her stand up and to stand, do a forward roll, and stand, do a forward roll, stand up and shake his hand. So gradually she became quite competent. He then took her around all the public rooms uh, in Haim where people were, including the bar, and he would have her do a forward roll, stand up and shake his hand. It's a pleasant story, but what's particularly interesting about that is that Billy's tendency to set the bar higher and to get people to do more than they expect is possible. We used to travel down south, particularly one time went to Wales. Believe it or not, it was the first course I practised under Billy. It was a place called Philly in South Wales. We arrived there after travelling overnight in a transit van. We arrived at the course and discovered the person that was taking the course was unavailable to take the course, so Billy was put in a very awkward position. I remember the key on practice, Sambon Committee, Kata, Epon Committee. The first time I'd been to Wales myself, and I just remember how the awkward position Billy was in, taking the, being asked to, to take the course at very short notice after travelling all night in a friend at van. This one spring weekend, um, Billy had us all organised to have a camping trip to the Lake District and he'd managed somehow to borrow a minibus from a friend and we'd all borrowed all sorts of assortments of tents and sleeping bags. So off we went, this minibus full of us and I think Vinny was there. I can't remember if Fergie was there um, at that time and a number of other people, some of who, who, no, who lo no longer practice. And we head down to the Lake District, managed to get all the tents pitched. That was a laugh and a half in itself. We, Billy supervised, we didn't stab each other with the tent pegs or whatever. And at that time, quite a number of people loved to play guitars and sing. Billy and Vinny um, probably amongst the star turns. And the first night there, of course, of course decided to have this sing song not realising that the sound would travel, you know, there must have been about 15 or 16 of us there, all singing our hearts out at the top of our voice, and all of a sudden the owner of the campsite came to tell us to turn the noise down, so of course the hilarity it followed as we tried to sing quietly and keep the guitars down, it was just basically not happening, and the um, result was that the owner of the campsite tried to evict us, and it was something like 11, 12 o'clock at night, and and we were thinking, oh no, what we're we going to do, we're going to have to start unpitching all these tents and get the stuff into the van. And um, Anyway, at this point, Billy, doing his usual leadership role, um, came and started a discussion uh, with the owner and managed to persuade him that actually a group of young people are going to make far more noise trying to unhook tents and load up a van and get out of the campsite. And would he please not be considered, at least let's stay till the next morning. So... Somehow the guy agreed and actually we ended up staying for the whole weekend and Billy had made peace so well that actually the next night we were invited up into the camp bar entertainment room. It was a bit like a, a big barn with tables and we were the entertainment for the night for the rest of the families and other campers that were there. Okay, having, having uh, spent maybe 16 years with Karate Do Shotokai and then a gap of 10 years and then another 16 years of Shotobudo, there's lots of different uh, memories and things that, that I can recall but there's some that stick in my mind particularly well because everybody remembers getting their first time and uh, I remember it because Harold Asensi personally awarded that to me and at a uh, summer school we used to travel down by coach and uh, there was maybe 40 of us coming from Scotland one of the uh, systems they had was they had an executive where senior black belts travelled down to England for meetings with senior black belts there and I remember uh, uh, quite a frightening thing, uh, although it's a distant kind of memory now, 
There are five of us senior black belts from Scotland. Myself, Billy was the uh, front seat passenger, and three other senior black belts, including Vinny Strachan, their good friend, Vinny. Um, two other senior black belts in the back seat. Driving down the hired car, we're late for the meeting. I um, kind of lost my attention a little bit because of headlights. And uh, at that point, Billy noticed it, touched the steering wheel, and I then kind of woke up because I was a bit mesmerized by the lights, overcompensated and almost ended up in a ditch, but we did a 180 degree wheelie hard up against the curb. And all we had was a, a puncture and sore heads from bumping off the, the ceiling. The people in the back seat said we were that far away from hitting the, the car that I just missed. If it hadn't been for Billy's presence of mind, who knows, we might not have been here today. Um, certainly not been a short Buddha organization, except for his uh, quick attention. And that's typical of Billy, attention to detail, looking out for everybody. And uh, that, that's one uh, incident that I'm glad was behind us, but I'm very grateful that he was in that car at that time. Well, talking about Billy, I think personally Billy has, of course, influenced maybe the most of any teachers what, what I have been practicing. And I, I, I think I have learned from Billy most of the karate skills. And I have also, of course, learned from other teachers, also British ones who came to Finland, but, <laughs> well, later on, it has been Billy who has explained me what I have learned from them, <laughs> because I didn't always know. But what I would like to bring up here, Horace, is the view from the Finnish Karate Organization, because I've been involved that almost the whole, whole time I've been practicing, so at least two things that has made us, I think, today what we are, are because of Billy, because do you remember <clears throat> when Billy came, or perhaps do you remember when we got teachers from Britain, which started in the middle of 70s or something like that, they always came to teach us, which was of course okay, and but year after year they always come to teach us and only teach us. And I think we also you were used to that, that we can't do many things. They can, they come to teach us. Until, well, it was when Shatapuda was founded and Billy came alone. And I remember when he came to Kusano, that was the time when Becca got fit down. And somebody asked Billy that, uh, well, do, do we call you now sensei? Because you have an organization and you are the main teacher there. And Billy said, well, we were higher grades there. No, 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 I'm just practicing with you. No, no, I'm not your sensei. But, 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 no, 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 no. And somebody said that, uh, well, can we call you senpai? Which means older practitioner. Practitioner. And so, Oh, well, anyway, I'm older than you. Well, okay, <laughs> senpai, but no sensei for you. So he kind of lifted us and our organization and what we did to the same level. What people did, for example, in Scotland or Britain and like took us in a family. And this was one thing and it led, I think, to the fact that our self-confidence raised in Finland. <coughs> of course, there has been increasingly people traveling to Britain to courses and they know, knew the truth that the people coming to teach in Finland were always the top 10 or top 5. But we, <laughs> people believe that everybody in Britain are like them. <laughs> so people traveling to courses, of course, knew that we are quite similar. We, practice good things both and when we got that self-confidence I think it helped our Finnish organization to stay together because there were several several splits in Britain and we had friends in all the groups but 
in Finland we just stayed together, wanted to be friends with everybody. But some of them didn't want, <laughs> or they wanted us to choose. Pili never made us to choose anything. Yes, he always told that he is just helping us, yeah. helping us and giving us yeah. advice and information about so, so I, I think he has influenced quite a much the Finnish organization today to be what it is, and our good co cooperation now today. And from my point of view, he is absolutely that karate teacher also that has influenced most to me. So Pekka Venäläinen gave basics in Turku to my career and I have practiced also with, with Arada Sensei and you have Colin Reeve. And quite in early stage you have to just start with Kuzma and make your own clothes. Yes. After four years, you're on your own. own. That's true. Then I have been 25 years on my own <laughs> and with my club and quite far from civilization. Anyway. <laughs> but Billy has visited with the Scottish friends, of course, many times in Kuzma also, and I have visited in Scotland. And uh, if I th think about what I have got from Billy. Of course, if we think martial arts and self-defense, he has given those facts and principles what, what are the most important in fighting and, uh, for example, how you or how we use our energy and body, mind combined in different situations. But also, he has given like this kind of uh, Umbrella of Shoto Budo, and it concerns the whole life, I think. So, not just martial arts, but well being and these kind of things. And if we understand those principles, so it helps us also in everyday life. Yeah, and, I, and as I work in, in an activity program company, so I have, I have done in purpose this kind of programs to where I can use this. If it was only fighting facts. Yeah. If it was only fighting we get from practice I don't think I would have been practicing this long. Because but because it's so much more. That's true if you if you think the whole mm. life practicing so there has to be also something more than just a self defense. And when he get rid of his mustache, so <laughs> after that, after that, I have liked him. <laughs> he looked like a pimp. Nyt ei vuosista pilinkaa pilinkaa harjoitelles on ollut positiivista se, että olen elävä esimerkki siitä, että ei välttämättä kieltä tarvi osata, silti pystytään harjoittelemaan kehittymään ja tekemään kanssakäymistä muiden ihmisten kanssa. From the years together with practicing with Billy, he is a living example of, of that you don't have to have a common language to be able to practice and develop, have, have, have fun together. Syy, minkä takia Billin opis on viihtynyt, on se, että se on muuntautumiskykyyn pystyy antaa aina jotain uutta ja väliin potkii vähän Vähän niitä vanhojakin, jota pitäisi harjoitella, että kehitys jatkuu oikeaan suuntaan. The reason why it's rewarding to practice with Billy is that uh, he's always able to develop and give something new and also remind of, of the older things that should also be practiced. Tämä harjoittelu ei ole pelkästään ollut kehittymistä vartaloa. Vastaavaa, että kyllä tähän harjoitteluun kuuluu myös ystävyys. Se on erittäin tärkeä asia. Kiitoksia. This practicing has not only been to develop the body, it has also been a lot about friendship. Thank you. Se, mitä tavallaan niin Pili on tuonut mulle ja mikä pisti niin tavallaan alussa mun silmää, niin 
Vili ei koskaan sanonut, että se ei halunnut harjoitella mun kanssa. Ja se tarkoitti myös toista sellaista asiaa. Eli moni, kun ei pystynyt niin kun tekemään just niitä asioita mun kanssa, niin Vili niitä pystyi niitä asioita tekemään. Ja tästä tulee, se tullaan sellaiseen tilanteeseen, että tota, ruvetaan niin miettiä hetki, niin kun kasvataan koko ajan eteenpäin. Et Tämä kaveri osaa jotain sellaista, mitä noin muut ei osaa. And with Billy it was starting from the beginning such that Billy never said that he didn't want to practice with, with Juha. And Billy was also able to do things when practicing with Juha that other people could not do. <köhön> ja tota, sitten myöhemmin, koska mulla oli ongelmia oli tässä kielen kanssa, mitä mä halusin joskus niin kuin sanoa. Mutta tota, Billy kuitenkin ymmärti tavallaan niin kuin minun oma niin sanottu body language. Ja tota, sitä kautta niin kuin tultiin niin kuin lähemmäksi ja lähemmäksi ja lähemmäksi. Ja aika myöhemmin, kun mä rupesin tavallaan tekemään omia juttuja, että sille, että mä menin harjoittelemaan muihin tyylisuuntiin, niin mulla ei ole koskaan vaikeutta tulla takas ja siirtää niitä systeemiä tähän näin. Että Billy on sanonut, että ei käy. And also in the early phases already, um, when, when you had, had a little bit language problems also, Billy was able to read his body language and they were able to communicate in that way. And also when, when you have started to practice other styles uh, and brought some things from there to our practices, Billy never said that you cannot. Bring that in. Ja se, minkä mä tavallaan niin kun toin tavallaan myös muista tyylisuunnasta, niin oli yhtäkkiä niin kun hyvin pistetty niin kun kasaa, jos ei nyt ihan suoraa, mutta kuitenkin niin kun vedennollisesti siihen sotapudo, mitä me ny nykyään harjoitellaan. And the things that he brought from other styles, they were very quickly integrated into the Shota Buddha that we are practicing nowadays. Ja tota, mitä enemmän me tehtiin sen kanssa, ja tota, pikkuhiljaa opin niin kuin puhua kieleen, vähän kieltä, pystyin sanomaan, mitä mä niin kuin ajattelin niistä asioista, ja yhtäkkiä, mä niin kuin olen huomattu, että yhtäkkiä, kun pikkuhiljaa huomannut sen, että tota, se ajatteleekin niistä asioista aika paljon, myös samalla pisteen kuin mä itse ajattelen. And the more they practice together, and the better his English also became, and communication became better, they started to realize that there are a lot of similarities in, in the ways they think about topics. Ja, tässä on niin kun, nyt kerrottu se, että minkä takia mä niin kun harjoittelen. Voisi kuvitella silleen, että kun me puhutaan niin kun isosta perheestä, sotapudosta. Ja se on tavallaan niin kuin tämän sotapudon niin sanottu jonkunnäköinen isähaamo, millä pystyy tavallaan niin kuin sen asian kertoo ja sitten sen jälkeen se taas etenee se asia. Ja tässä on se syy, minkä takia mä ajattelen edelleen tätä. So, this is in short the reason why, why he is still practicing this and, and somehow this sotapudo is, you can see it as a big family and Billy as somehow the father figure who takes those topics in and forms them. So that's, that's the reason for practicing still. Mm. Thank you very much. So what I would say Billy is that you are the true martial artist in my eyes. In all the years that I have trained and I've seen you training, um, you have always pushed the boundaries you're, you're the one person who can truly say who does that. You're, you're never happy with where we're at at the moment. You're always looking for, for new ways to improve. And the, the, the thought and the effort behind these things is phenomenal, you know, and it's a testament to you. I would just like to say a bit about the development of Shota Budo and uh, Billy's influence on the organisation. I feel that 
what he's doing just now is he's encouraging the senior grades to take over big parts of the practice, running courses and uh, setting up the organisation so that at some stage he gives up karate and Hud is no longer there, that there'll be lots of uh, senior grades that can take over for him. Uh, and there are quite a lot of uh, the younger guys as well who have been pushed to move up into the senior grades. So there is a, a good progression within Shota Budo of uh, just, just building on uh, leadership skills and uh, techniques and the way, way to run, run an organisation. It's quite amazing. I mean, the 20 eight, 29 years, coming up to 30 years that um, we've trained and we've been associated with Billy. It's a testament to the man who can keep us all going this length of time, developing, progressing, and um, um, we still call him names. Mm. He's, he's a great practitioner, an awesome martial artist. Over the years he's become a great friend, um, he's a great coach and a lot of the technical skills which I have, uh, I wouldn't have without his help uh, and encouragement. Um, he's a great source of encouragement and he's a great coach to other people. He continually um, pushes the bar higher, he gets you to do more than you think possible. Any advice is freely given, you only have to ask and will happily provide it. Um, he's a great friend and I admire the man great. He's a leader, he's a friend, he's taught me a lot over the years, taught me a lot both in terms of martial arts but also in terms of life development, helping to improve my confidence, supporting me when I'm trying to achieve difficult tasks so you know I would have to say he's probably virgin on the genius in terms of instructors and you know I've dabbled in a few different martial arts over the years and None has compared, um, none has compared to Billy. One thing I've got to say about Billy, how he's, uh, the, his desires and how he's managed to uh, develop and progress and help people over the years, which has really been, has really impressed me personally. And you see the results he's proved with people's practices and people who have done really well for themselves is really down to Billy's influence and expertise. But as again, he's proved he's proved to sell how how well he's developed and helped karate move on to greater greater heights, which a lot of people should really look look up to him and say he's contributed to my practice and a lot of people's practices in general, which personally would be a very hard act to follow. And hopefully, people who who are practicing to the present day can take his guidance and go on. And develop other people in general. I've trained with other people within and out with martial arts in yoga, in shiatsu, um, tai chi and so forth, all of whom have been very uh, highly acclaimed instructors and I'd say Billy is way uh, above that. And I hope um, for Billy's sake there's many more years and for our sake too there are many many more years uh, for us to enjoy each other. Is it getting better?